Hey guys, we are here today in Valheim to go over how to make this very ugly smelting tower. If you are interested in building a very tight and compact system for smelting and processing ingots and ore, and you'd like to get this all built on just a 3x3 square, so you can get the entire system of charcoal kiln, smelter, and forge workshop going in as tight of a space as possible. You will need access to stone cutting and iron beams for this build, so be aware of that if you have not progressed to that point as of yet. In order to build this building, you will need approximately 35 to 40 iron, 200 to 250 stone, and around 400 to 450 wood. This does not include the forge, the upgrades, or the certling cores needed for the smelter and kiln. This is just for the building itself. So the first thing I did was set up a stone cutter, a forge, and a workbench on either side of my working area. That way I can build wherever I'd like without any limitations. And since we're just going to deconstruct a lot of these right after we're done, we're not losing out on any of the materials. We're going to start by placing down stone tile floors that are two by two. And we are doing these stone tiles three by three. So it's going to be nine stone tiles in a square. And that will lift up off the ground a little bit depending on where you're standing and how level your ground is. If you don't want the stone tiles protruding over the ground like it is over there, you can place wood beams as a border first and they will snap to the bottom of the wood beams. Since they're touching the floor, they won't break. And then you can place your stone floor like that and then remove the wood beams. That way the stone floor is in the ground a little bit. But for the build here, we're just going to keep it above ground like this. But the next thing we're going to do is take the vertical wood iron poles. And what we want to do is you can see they'll sit on top and do a two meter high wall. But we are going to sink it to the bottom of the stone to where it's only one meter above the stone. And you're going to do this on the two sides on each side of the center row so that there's four total poles. You might be able to get away on the higher levels with doing less iron poles if you would like. However, for Symmetrics and my OCD, we are going to do it this way, that way it's even. We're going to place wood poles on top of those, and the first level of the tower only needs to be one and a half high, just like that. So we are then going to do horizontal wood beams and connect the two sides with three wood beams. After you have the beams up, those are going to be the sides of our buildings where the beams are, so I'm going to place a gate on wherever I want the front of the building to be. And in order to cover the stone underneath it, I'm just going to place a half wood wall down there. And then I will go around the whole building with wooden walls all the way to the bottom of the stone. You can place them on top of the stone if you want to have the stone visible on the bottom, but I do not. And then we will do a second row of walls all the way around. And you will see that we have the base layer finished. To the right of the door on the side of the wall, we are going to add in our stair pieces. Once you have your stairs high enough to get up and work on the next level, you're gonna place your stone supports on top of the iron beams. If you snap them to the bottom of the iron beams, they will snap because they don't have proper support. But if you hook them on top of the beams, they are strong enough to hold it. And we're gonna go around this whole area and floor it all with stone. Once you have the second level of stone done, we need to add more iron beams. It can be hard to attach these through wood walls. So we're gonna do it now before we put the walls up again. And it's gonna be the same thing. Sink halfway into the stone, exactly where you went before. And these are gonna go two higher. Instead of just one and a half high, it's gonna be two and a half high. And if you're struggling to attach them up there, then we're just gonna add in a little ladder and get a bit higher. Same thing as before, once those are up, we can create cross beams to connect them. And then we are going to use full walls to again cover the stone and go around the building. Now to circle around the building with the stairs the rest of the way, we need to put a corner piece that's flat so we can turn the stairs, but it's really hard to attach. You could go down and aim it at the stairs to attach it, but that won't be really possible once we get higher on these stairs. So the other way is to lay a piece on top of the stairs and by aiming at the other end of it, it will snap it in place underneath on the stairs. Then you can delete that top piece. And you'll just circle around the building, doing stairs and walls the whole way. 
I would try not to place stairs before walls because it can be hard to attach walls underneath staircases. And we'll be taking these walls all the way up to the top of the iron so you can kind of just work your way as you go. And again, try and place walls before you place the next staircase. All right, and then we will floor the next section with the stone exactly the same way we did before. You can see that little space between my two stone cutters is right at the top of my floor. So I'm gonna have to come down the stairs a little bit and aim. Hopefully you place your stone cutters smarter than I do. And you can see right here with the stone, it's sometimes hard to aim it off of the middle aisle and get it to snap in the right position. Now, since we're at the top level, we're not doing any more iron beams. Even on the levels with iron beams, if you place the beams first or can place them through walls, this is an issue, but it can help to snap if you snap the walls first. And then when you aim a stone piece over there, you have something to push against to snap into place. And that can make it go a lot smoother. This tower is pretty high, so you might have issues with the stone cutter not getting high enough in order to let you build up here. But we are not doing anything more than this level, so once you get it up here, you'll be all in the clear. You just gotta finagle your way around for the moment. And there we go. And up here, we will be doing only one full wall, which means we are gonna be doing half walls on top of these full walls since we have one meter already protruding up. And once we get the walls done on that level, we are going to continue our stairs around. And we should only need one more up from where we were. And that should be even with the stone. Then we're going to do another flat board on that. And I'll need to destroy the two wood pieces here. And we are going to place a basic door. I'm going to have the door swing in away from my stairs up. That way when I come out, it's not my way to go back in the stairs. These stairs are staying here permanently because this will be our access to the higher levels. So we're gonna go ahead and rail those. To rail the actual stairs themselves, take 26 degree beams, attach them to the bottom, and that will help you a little bit, but you can still fall off those. If that's fine with you, leave that. If you'd like full safety, attach one to the top of the half wall as well, and you'll create yourself a full railing, although it does not look all pretty. Just like we did at the top where we saw where our stone floor was and created a landing pad with a door, you want to do that on the middle floor unlike I did here. So I recommend a little bit more forethought and pre-planning than I put into this and to actually place yourself a door on the second level so you can access that floor. Now I can see where it would have gone so I'm going to go ahead and place myself a gate there and get myself a landing pad and have to adjust a little bit how my stairs are right now. All right, after that little fiasco, we now have access to all three floors. Measure twice, cut once. Saves you a whole lot of time. All right, anyway, now we can go ahead and roof it. We are gonna use 45 degree roofing so that we have plenty of height on this floor here because it will only be one wall high. And we are gonna just simply go around the whole way and get it all together and then place ourselves a 45 degree peak piece in the middle. If you would like, you can add some roof crosses to the top of the peak and fancy it all up. And you might have to build yourself a little scaffold around the edges to get those. All right, now that we got everything else on the exterior done, it's time to place our crafting stations and kilns. So depending on where you start your staircase, it is going to pop your door onto these levels at different points. So all I'm gonna say instead of a certain spot, is figure out where the kiln can sit and I would rotate the spout of it away from the door a little bit and try and get it just to sit in a comfortable spot. This is an incredibly tight build but you will have room to walk around it. You can then go ahead and place chests stacked in the corner behind the kiln however many you want however high you want to hold some wood and we are going to destroy the stone floor in front of the kiln. Now we are so high that our stone cutter is not reaching. If this is happening to you, you can either destroy one of the stone cutters and move it up higher, or you can figure out 
which stone floor it is based on where you're at at the entrance and then get to a lower point and destroy it from underneath. Once we see where the coal is going to dispense down on the bottom floor, we are going to take our smelter and set it up so that the coal is dispensing on the coal intake and we're going to place it to where its spout is dropping down another level and destroy that piece. Same thing on this floor, you just take some chests on your ore side and stack them up so that you can have ore ready to go. Maybe a chest to hold extra coal if you don't have enough room in your inventory to get it all up. And then we will head to the bottom level. We see the ore drops right in front of our door and we're going to place our forge on this level. Once our forge is placed, you can see that it is tight and compact. However, all the upgrades do fit in the room and has some extra room a little bit for chests to get us a fully working and upgraded forge. You can see this setup, however, has a little bit more room in it. If you are not on an island, then you can do this whole setup right here and do like I did to where I took out the middle piece and I dug down a little bit and placed all the upgrades underground. Once you place the upgrades to get out, you just need to place a ladder touching the bottom of the stone and you will be able to hop out with a little bit of effort and get out of the cave. And then once you're out, you can just leave that wood down there and replace the stone floor. You can also see in this other tower I have with the whole test set up that the spouts and the dispensers all line up in different spots than the one we just built. And the smelter drops out the center hole instead of the side. So depending on how you place your staircases and you design the floor plan, it will pop these out in different locations. So you can kind of tailor it to how you'd like. All in all, no matter where you get it all set up, it is very tight, but it is functional. You can fit some chest around it and fill up that kiln with wood. Get your smelter all loaded up with coal and ingots. And you'll see that that kiln is spitting out coal right next to the coal intake on the smelter. And that smelter is dropping ingots right in front of your doorway so you can use it for your forge. Hopefully this guide on how to make an incredibly compact smelting tower was helpful to you if you are looking to keep everything in as tight of a space as possible. If you'd like to see more videos covering Valheim, make sure you hit that subscribe button down at the bottom. And you can also join my Discord if you want to talk about games even when you are not on them. I appreciate you guys joining me for this video. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.